Hello, my name's Jeremiah, and I thank you for letting us into your home today to talk about water softeners. To begin, have you ever wondered where Las Vegas gets its water from? Well, let's find out. From the snow-capped peaks of the Rocky Mountains, our water begins its journey down the Colorado River. From there, it winds its way south to the depths of the Grand Canyon, where it incidentally picks up minerals like calcium and magnesium, both of which are actually metals. At last, our water arrives in Lake Mead. Now, one of the many interesting characteristics of the lake is the strange ring surrounding it that many call the bathtub ring. Now, this is more accurate than they may know because the chalky residue on the lake wall is made up of some of the same stuff as an actual bathtub ring, which is calcium and magnesium. Now, the Southern Nevada Water Authority states on their website that Southern Nevada gets nearly 90% of its water supply from the Colorado River. The rest comes from local underground sources. They go on to explain water from Lake Mead is treated with small quantities of chlorine. A multi-stage filtration system is then used to remove particles from the water. As the water leaves the water treatment facilities, chlorine is again added to protect it on its way to the residents' taps. Note how they mention chlorine. We'll touch on that later. Now let's take a look at what happens to our water after we use it. The same website states, when you take a shower or wash your car at a commercial facility, the unused water flows into the sanitary sewer. This sewer water travels to a wastewater treatment facility where it is treated. The highly treated wastewater is returned to the Colorado River via the Las Vegas wash, which flows into Lake Mead. Make no mistake, these words were chosen because how nice they sound. It seems that they intentionally left out that unused water includes everything that's flushed down and dumped. The leaky engine fluids from the car wash, the undigested pharmaceuticals flushed down, and everything else. Well, let's take a look for ourselves, shall we? Here is an aerial view of Lake Mead. The line shows the flow of the Las Vegas wash through the lake and to the Hoover Dam where it continues south as the Colorado River. This line shows the route the highly treated wastewater could potentially take were it going back to Las Vegas. That's right, the intake pipes for the water company are only a few miles away from where they are dumping. I mean, recycling the water. It's true, there are three massive intake pipes that the water company gets 90% of our water from in Lake Mead. They even state that because our main water supply comes from the mineral-laden Colorado River, Southern Nevada's water is very hard. Removing the calcium and magnesium softens the water, but it is not a necessity to protect your health. Some people prefer softened water for bathing, cleaning, and washing clothes. Well, let's take a look at why some people prefer soft water. Here are some of the non-health-related problems of hard water. Premature water heater failure. Mineral deposits on your household fixtures. Just about everything your water comes in contact with. Let's not forget about the effects on our laundry. So we're going to cover the need to know information on what is a water softener. To begin, the main ingredient of every modern water softener is resin beads that are specifically designed for the purpose of water softening. Manufacturers make these beads in a process they call cross-linking. To get a better understanding of this, all we got to do is look at the microscopic structure of the resin. Each strand of molecules are linked together by connections. The more connections, the more cross-linking. In the example above, we begin with 8% cross-linked resin. That means that 8% of the resin molecules are cross-linked to another chain of molecules. This goes for the other two types of resin, which are 10% cross-linked and 16% cross-linked, the best resin available. When these cross-linked chains of resin molecules are rolled together to form a bead, the cross-linking determines firmness and how the bead will hold up to pressure. When we take an 8% cross-linked resin bead and apply water pressure, the bead compresses and takes up more room, which then prevents more water from flowing through. Now a 16% cross-linked resin bead does not compress as much because it has twice the connections between the molecule chains, allowing for a far better water flow. When we take a look at how this looks in a water softener, we see that the 8% cross-link beads compress under pressure and the water channels around the sides of the tank because water always takes the path of least resistance. As you can see, 
16% crosslink beads don't compress as much and allow more water to flow evenly through the system. What this means is superior resin life and consistent water pressure. One of the other factors that lessens resin life is the effect of chlorine. Over time, the chlorine in Las Vegas water degrades the resin beads, turning them into more of a gel, which dramatically reduces water pressure and makes them far less effective at removing the calcium and magnesium from the water. Chlorine is most easily removed from the water with activated carbon, which is typically made of coconut shells that have been turned to charcoal, creating a microscopic structure that traps chlorine molecules. Some water softeners come with carbon inside the resin tank. However, a whole home carbon filter can be installed separately to remove chlorine from the water supply. Okay, so now that we know what cross-linked resin beads are, let's take a look at how they remove hardness from the water. Every modern water softener operates by removing calcium and magnesium through a process called ion exchange. Now before we move on, I want to define what an ion is. An ion is a molecule that has either a positive charge or a negative charge. The resin beads that are used in water softeners have a positive charge. This makes them cation, more easily remembered by remembering that a cat has paws, meaning that cation is positive. As it turns out, calcium and magnesium have a positive charge, and so does sodium or salt. Since the resin beads hold on to positively charged ions, when the hard water passes through the resin, the sodium ions are released in exchange for the calcium and magnesium ions. When the resin can't hold any more calcium and magnesium, the system rinses them in a brine solution, in salt water, to regenerate the resin in a process called regeneration. During regeneration, sodium ions now replace the calcium and magnesium ions, and the beads are once again ready to remove more hardness from the water. And that is Water Softener 101. For more informative videos or to schedule your home inspection, feel free to contact us at 702-823-6568 or check out our website at clearinspectionslv.com. Thanks for watching.